DFS is a very complicated game where sometimes things that seem good can wind up being bad, where you are happy about one thing, but it leads to sadness in a different area. And I mean, specifically for this slate tonight, in MLB DFS, Shane Bieber salary. I was in on Shane Bieber. I thought he'd be the top guy for tonight and open up the salary pool for today and see that he's down $8,600. To me, that's pretty surprising, given that he's facing the Tigers. He's been pitching a lot better recently. So I was surprised by that. It's like, okay, cool. My favorite pitcher, super low salaried. That also means he's probably going to be pretty popular. So there are pros. There are cons. We're going to have to balance that and decide, is Bieber good enough to cancel out the likely popularity? Or is that salary so low, we just shouldn't care and should lock him in regardless. We'll break that down and get you set for Friday Night Slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to break down Friday night's 13-game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for tonight. Couple of rain spots on this slate, specifically out east. We got a chance of rain in D.C. for the Nationals and the Rockies. I think they'll be able to play, but it's worth checking back on that one later. Rain is also possible in New York for the Mets and the Phillies. That one seems a bit murkier than D.C. Um, but I would say highest rain odds or highest rain out odds are there. Rain is also possible in Detroit for the Tigers and Guardians. Uh, it's low odds most of the night. I think they should be okay, but keep an eye on that one. And that does obviously pertain to Shane Bieber as our potential top guy for today. We're going to break down what I see in Bieber, how to handle him, and much more in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast. So you got a Coca-Cola 600 DFS preview coming up later on today. we got PGA next week, UFC next week. And of course, the solo shot every weekday. So hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Hey, soccer fans, this season, FanDuel and Captain Morgan are teaming up to give you a one of a kind soccer contest to spice up game day. Introducing Captain Morgan Soccer Pick'em, a weekly fantasy contest that is entirely free to play. The contest is simple. All you have to do is answer 10 questions about Captain Morgan in that week's soccer matchup. People with the most correct answers will earn their share of cash prizes. Head over to FanDuel.com slash free game slash Captain Morgan and spice up game day with a free shot at cash prizes every Saturday. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 plus to enter. Location restrictions apply. Void were prohibited. See full terms at FanDuel.com. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate, Justin Verlander is the highest salary guy checking in at $10,800. Alec Manoa is ten two. Sean Manaya $9,700. We got Brandon Woodruff at ninety five. dollars Jamison Tyone, Shane Bieber, Brad Keller, Carlos Carrasco, and Trevor Rogers are the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, again, Shane Bieber is the top guy for tonight, but it's hard to figure out what to do with him because that salary is so low. I'm inclined to just say you use him in cash and I still give him strong consideration in tournaments because I just think he's so under salary that it kind of offsets the roster rate liability that he brings with him. Bieber's facing the Tigers. That is the second straight time they've seen him. I'm just not sure how much it matters with such a bad offense. They have a 70 WRC plus against righties, which is easily the worst in the slate. They have a 26% strikeout rate and a low walk rate. Bieber did let up two earned runs across seven innings against them last time out, but he also had 10 strikeouts, which is easily the highest mark he's had all year. That could be a downside, buying into him off his high water mark, and his strikeout rate is just 24%. We've seen Bieber get seven strikeouts in three other starts, and his swinging strike rate is 13.2%. That tells me his strikeout rate is more likely to go up as the season goes along than to go down. Plus, the pitch count here is great. He's gone 100-plus pitches in four of his past five starts. I don't really like pushing guys up a bunch based on the matchup, but I, I tend to think that pitcher quality matters more. But this matchup is outliersly bad. Bieber pitching well enough to make me believe he can blow up again. So I will overlook my typical approach and be in on Bieber here. The question is, again, is it enough to outweigh the likely high roster rate he will come with? So that's why we dive into some other pitchers here on tonight. If you decide, hey, I don't want to deal with Bieber, whether it be because of the repeat matchup, whether it be because of the roster rate, whatever it may be, I do think you've got really good options. 
Along with Bieber, the top of the strikeout board is pretty tight for tonight. We got Sean Manaya, Justin Verlander, and Brandon Woodruff, all with roughly the same strikeout projection. So I get to pick the guy in the best situation, and to me, that is Sean Manaya. I'm going to put Manaya a hair above those other two. Manaya's at home against the Pirates. The Pirates did just lose Dan Vogelbach, and obviously we care less about that against a lefty than a righty, but it's also just another competent big league batter being taken out of this lineup. They're also a super lefty heavy lineup. I would expect four true lefties to be in the starting lineup for the pirates for tonight. Manaya doesn't get that very often. He has faced just 45 lefties all year long compared to 154 righties. Even with all those righties, we've still seen Manaya pitch really well. He has a 3.36 skill interactive ERA with a 28% strikeout rate. He has had some issues with hard contact and that did bite him last week. But I'm not sure the Pirates are really going to generate enough power for that to matter too much for me. Their fly ball rate against lefties is 33%. So we should bump Manaya down against good offenses because his red flags are legitimate with the bad at ball issues. I just don't think the Pirates qualify as that, especially against the lefty with no Vogelbach in the lineup. So I like Manaya. I will rank him second behind Bieber and second overall for tonight at 95. If you want to pivot off Bieber, I would say your number one guy to turn to for me would be Sean Manaya. So Bieber counts as our value play. Kind of cheating here on the podcast for today, but hey, uh, our podcast, our rules, which means I can just kind of go straight up for the third spot and pick whoever I want. I'm going to favor Verlander over Woodruff for this third spot. And the big difference for me is a matchup. Verlander's facing the Mariners, and they've been good this year. They have a 112 WRC plus against righties, but their ISO is also 112, so not a lot of power, which means Verlander's floor should be very high. Woodruff is facing the Cardinals. They have a 119 WRC plus against righties with an 18% strikeout rate. That's very low. I think that's a tougher matchup for Woodruff than for Verlander, and I will let that dictate my decision-making here. I do like Woodruff, though. Just want to mention that. Um, I do want to mention that I would put him fourth for tonight and ha- I'm co- comfortable with using him, but Verlander does earn this top spot. He's made eight starts. He has a 3.15 skill interactive ERA with a 26% strikeout rate. His hard hit rate is very good as well. We've seen Verlander face Seattle already this year, uh, but not since May 4th. So still some ding for familiarity, but not too much. He had eight strikeouts in the first game. Didn't get much in the second, but I've got Verlander projected for 6.4 strikeouts for tonight. That is enough to put him fourth behind Woodruff, Manaya, and Bieber. I'm okay with that, Mark. I'm okay with him at 6.4. And again, it's the other stuff, the non-strikeout stuff that lowers me a bit on Woodruff. So I will put Woodruff fourth, Verlander third, Manaya second, and Shane Bieber at the top for tonight. But with three legitimate ace-tier guys outside of Bieber for tonight, I do think you got a lot of wiggle room to deviate from Bieber in single entry. Like, let's say you're playing one single entry lineup. I would probably go Manaya personally. I think Manaya will also catch some buzz because he's facing the pirates, but I don't think it'll be as bad as Bieber given how low Bieber's salary is. So for single entry, I'm probably, I'd probably lean towards Manaya for cash games. I would just say go Bieber and uh, ride with that. But again, Woodruff Verlander also worth consideration in those formats. Let's move now to the stacks for today. Stacks a little bit tougher than you might think for a 13 game slate. And I think that's evidenced by our top stack being against Chris Flexen. Flexen is facing the Astros and I know we've been going towards them a lot this week, and it hasn't always worked out, but I do want to do so once again here. Flexen last year did a good job of limiting hard contact, and it allowed him to do well even with a low strikeout rate. That hasn't carried over to this year. His hard hit rate is 47%. That is up 9 percentage points from where it was last year. His fly ball rate also up 9 percentage points, and it leads to a 4.98 ERA, and his expected ERA is even higher at 6.22. So Flexen might be able to turn it around because, you know, he's, I think, long-term a good pitcher. But that's across 140 balls in play. That is not a small sample. Batted ball numbers tend to stabilize somewhere between 70 to 100 balls in play, and he's about double that. So even if Flexen does improve, he's probably not going to get back to the levels he had last year. That spells trouble when a strikeout rate is 17%. And we've seen it get even worse recently. Flexen has let up five plus earned runs in two of his past three starts. That includes one at home. Now he is there again, but he's facing the Astros. Uh, He held them to one run across five innings earlier on this month, but I think they'll have a better chance to succeed 
this time around. So the Astros, to me, are the top stack of the night. It's worth mentioning with Flexen, who's a righty, that I would give righties a bump here because Flexen has let up a 42% hard hit rate to them with a 51% fly ball rate. The strikeout rate pretty even versus righties and lefties. So I've been on the lefties on this Astros team a lot recently. I'm going to skew more towards the righties this time around, which is good because a lot of the, the lower end value plays, Chaz McCormick, Jose Siri, those kind of guys tend to be lower salaried. So bumping up the righties for today, I still love Alvarez, Tucker, uh, okay with Brantley, but like I'm going to bump up the righties relative to where I have been previous and relative to where I typically am against a right. For our second stack, sorry, I'm going to stack against Madison Bumgarner again tonight. It still has not been super successful yet, but we have seen some more slips recently. So it gives me a window to stack against him here. He's facing the Dodgers, and they're a solid offense against lefties with a 38% fly ball rate. And we saw them get to Bumgarner about 11 days ago. Bumgarner led up three earned runs across five innings. And it's part of an interesting stretch here for Bumgarner. He's used his curveball more across his past six starts. And I'm curious about why, because it has not been a good pitch for him. It's not a, a big whiff pitch for him, so it's not, I don't think, driving up a slight increase in his strikeout rate. The ex-WOBA against that pitch is 380, according to Baseball Savant, which is the highest of any of his pitches by a pretty good margin. That does mean that Bumgarner could say, hey, this isn't working, just go back to putting that pitch at, at a lower usage rate. But I think it's noteworthy that the results have not been as favorable in this time. He let up two under the Marlins, which is fine, but four under the Cubs last time out, including a couple of home runs. He's let up five home runs in the five stars with more curveballs. He didn't let up any to the Dodgers, uh, but it's interesting to me that we've seen Bumgarner leaning more on a bad pitch and the results have started to follow suit. There's a lot of data that says he should regress, and we've seen some signs of that in the results recently too. So even if it's not the most comforting thing, and even if it has been frustrating to stack against him this year, I am going to do so once again and use the Dodgers in this spot. I haven't used a lot of Justin Turner so far this year, but I think this is a good spot to do so. He's had terrible results against lefties, but his fly ball rate is 50%. Hard hit rate is pretty good. The barrel rate is actually up a smidge from where it was last year. So I'll bank on things improving going forward, which could start tonight, which means that Turner, despite the fact he hasn't really been a focal point for me, I'm okay going there for sure for today. And it does open up a lot of viability in some lower salary guys to stack the Dodgers against the lefty versus a righty. Chris Taylor gets bumped up. Um, you get uh, Turner looking a bit better. So that does help for me, for sure. Uh, so the Dodgers, to me, the number two stack. I want to stick in that same game for the third stack. The Dodgers are facing or are pitching Ryan Pepio. Pepio has had good results this year, both in AAA and the majors, but the underlying numbers are scary, as are the numbers from the minors last year. And I think that opens the door to stack the Diamondbacks once again. The big thing for Pepio is walks. He has a 10% walk rate in AAA in the majors across two starts. He has eight walks and in seven innings. He had a 10% walk rate in AAA last year. And walks are annoying for DFS because it limits the number of balls in play. You get three points there versus, you know, 18.7 for a home run. But they're going to flood the bases. And the batted ball profile is not pristine either. We've seen Pepio be a big fly ball guy throughout the minors. And that's followed him up the ladder, too, because he's allowed 16 balls in play in the majors so far. Ten of those have been fly balls, only four ground balls. He's let him three barrels and seven hard hit balls. So basically, despite the good results, he's living dangerously. And this is the second time he's seen Arizona in 10 days. He let up three earned runs across four innings the first time. His other start in the majors was against the Pirates. So it's not exactly blazing competition in this two-start sample. The Diamondbacks, I think, are a pretty fun offense. They've got a lot of guys I like using, and plus the roof is open for today. Despite the fact it's 102 degrees, their website says the roof will be open. So I think it's a great park for offense. Let's just stack both sides and see what happens. And I do think that the Diamondbacks definitely hold their own uh, within that stack for sure. Now, within that Diamondback stack, I've been using them for a bit now and have used a lot of guys pretty often. One guy I didn't use initially is Paven Smith. I just did kind of skipped over him, but... He's picking it up. His ISO against righties is up to 198. He has a 42% fly ball rate. I'm still not going to be as high on him as I am Dalton Varsho, Josh Rojas, David Peralta, Christian Walker, but Smith is higher for me than he was previously. And if you've got four legit guys you can use in a stack, 
that's pretty enticing. It is a bit of a bummer that, you know, you got Varsho uh, and Walker both at uh, catcher slash first base. Varsho does have outfield too, but then you've got a lot of overlap because uh, Smith is also first base, first base at slash outfield. That may put a lid on roster rates, you know, because you've got three guys who all have first base eligibility, but it is kind of a bummer with flexibility. Good thing is that Smith and Varsho both have outfield. You run into Peralta having outfield, Alec Thomas, uh, McCarthy, stuff like that. But that's the only downside with the Diamondbacks to me is that it's a lot of outfield and catchers, but I think that's okay for me for sure. And hopefully you can get some infielders from the Dodgers with guys like Turner and other Turner, et cetera, et cetera. Let's talk about things to watch here. The Red Sox have a super, super high implied total for today. It's actually the highest in the slate. And I understand why, because that offense is cooking right now. Trevor Story could get that implied total by himself, but I don't think Kyle Bradish is that bad. Um, he's had rough results. His peripherals are better. So the Red Sox are fine. Definitely would consider them for stacking. But again, going back to single entry type stuff, I probably will not use them in single entry just because I think they'll be a bit more popular than they should be. I've got a lot of good options for tonight. I think that I can avoid them and just hope that they don't blow things up for sure, which they could because they're the Red Sox and Bradish has had his struggles, but we'll see how that goes. The forecast doesn't look great in D.C., uh, so I didn't want to spend a full stack on the Rockies if the game wasn't going to play. But if that game plays, I do like them. Facing Aaron Sanchez, who's had some big struggles this year, especially against lefties. So Charlie Blackman, Ryan McMahon could be good one-offs. And I would use Sam Hilliard if he were to play. But the Rockies in general I would are a team I'd monitor for stacking for today. As far as the Brewers go, I'm pretty conflicted. They're facing Dakota Hudson and... Every number says to stack against him except the fly ball rate. It's very low, and that matters a lot. Hudson has not been bulletproof, but he has been good overall, and I think that that his batted ball suppression is actually a skill. So I'm fine with the Brewers, but I don't want to go too crazy because it's not fully optimal to stack against a guy with a fly ball rate that low and with results that good. Don't really want to go too crazy there, but I will consider them for sure. Let's finish up with some dinger picks here for tonight. And this one is actually based on uh, sportsbook odds because I was uh, perusing things this morning. I had some extra time this morning. I like Alex Bregman a lot. He was plus 530 to go deep against Chris Flexen. I talked about Flexen's issues with right-handed batters earlier. Bregman hasn't been tearing it up recently, but still putting the ball in the air against righty. He's still not striking out. That's, that's at 520 now, so that's come down a tiny bit, but not enough where I'm scared off. Uh, I think that Bregman... I mean, just he's a boring one in general because he's a good good batter. But I think that uh, if you're looking for a bet, Bregman would work out pretty well too. I do like him in this spot. So Alex Bregman, the boring home run call. The fun one will be Justin Turner, kind of stretching a bit on the fun one there because he's $3,000. He's an established guy, but he's been bad this year. Uh, the results have not been good. So expecting some upward progression here from Justin Turner. So the home run calls for today, Alex Bregman and Justin Turner. That is all that we have here for today on the Solo Shop. Pretty fun slate, though. Uh, I think you've got fun ways to play things. I like slates where I can probably guess where people will go, but have good pivots off of that shock and pivots that I like and can feel good about either way. I don't want to pivot uh, just to pivot. I want to pivot uh, to guys who I think can beat that guy, and I think we have that for tonight in MLB DFS. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed because our NASCAR podcast for the Coca-Cola 600 is coming up later on this morning. And of course, PGA UFC each week as well. So search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Tuesday. No podcast Monday due to Memorial Day. Talk to you once again Tuesday. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.